Yo, what's happening, friendos? Grietzi mitanand to all my Switzerland folk. Welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we're going to be doing another frog room tour. Um, it's been about a year since the last video, or last frog room tour, I should say. Um, and since then, I've only added three tanks. One of them being the 300 gallon paludarium, which I built on the channel to a certain degree. You guys haven't seen an update on that in a few months. I'll fill you in what's going on or what had happened with that. And I've got that all sorted out now. Um, I added the in-situ Alto and the in-situ Amazonia vivariums. I built those two on the channel, so you guys will get to see how those have grown in. Um, I've also added quite a few plants, quite a few frogs. You're gonna see all that in this video. Um, and I did also add two tadpole racks and I've changed up the way I've been raising my froglets. So I'll show you that as well. Um, so yeah, if that sounds interesting, I guess stay tuned for the video. If not, then I don't know why you clicked the frog room tour thumbnail. Um, but uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It means a lot. Um, I'd appreciate it. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the tour. Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, it's been about a year since I've done an update. While the actual layout of the room hasn't changed too much, uh, I did recently add these two tanks over here. Um, well, not recently. These are the two I built on the channel that are the in-situ in ecosystems vivariums. Um, yeah, so we'll get into those in a few minutes, but um, I have added quite a few plants and also quite a few frogs as well, so um, I won't talk too much, so let's just get into it, because I'll be talking a lot during this tour. Um, in this tank, this is a 44 by 17 by 24 custom-built vivarium built by me. Um, if you guys are new here and haven't seen any of my videos before, I do show you how to build these vivariums in a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, some people found it pretty helpful. Others seems to just have more questions for me, but check it out for yourself and you'd be the judge. Anyways, um, this tank houses my Ufaga Histrionica Anchicaia, which are an absolutely stunning, large, beautiful, obligate species of poison dart frogs. And, um, these guys are breeding. They just recently transported some tadpoles. Um, this is a, uh, here, this is Vresia, or sorry, that's a Anthurium vecchii. Um, it's not growing the best, but it's still alive and still throwing new leaves. So I'm just leaving it in there, letting it do its thing. That's pretty much what I do with all my vivariums. I just kind of, I don't do much manicuring and much trimming. I just kind of plant them and let them do their thing. Um, I did recently add these here, these smaller bromeliads. Um, these I've used before in my 180 gallon vivarium. These are Vresia racinae. Um, they're a great smaller accent bromeliad. Um, I think they pair greatly with the Vresia hieroglyphica, which are kind of my favorite bromeliad and um, really just, they're kind of an overpowering plant. So. Um, you'll see a, a reoccurring theme in my vivariums as of late have been mainly just green plants. Um, I haven't been getting too crazy with, you know, colors and stuff, but, um, moss growth has been pretty good. Um, and this is a substrate list tank. This is just that sponge filter mat. I've had really good results with it. Um, Vericosum's doing really well in the tank. I've used these main plants here for tons of cuttings for other tanks um, once they get to the top I just clip them and uh, yeah just a, a, a overall I think this is probably my my favorite vivarium in the frog room and to the left of that this is the tank that I currently have my lone Bahia Solana uh, Ufaga Histrionica Bahia Solana um, I recently replanted this one, so this should look significantly different than the last tour. Um, you know, I kind of calmed down on some of the bromeliads. Again, you see I used the Vresia racinae, lots of moss. It's really a simple tank. Um, there's some 
Philodendron Lincoln Park. Um, there's some random orchids in the back that you can't really see, but um, yeah, that's uh, Anthurium uh, Compact or Compacta. It's a really weird growth. It grows to the top and then just kind of the leaves die and then it throws new growth, but you can see that that long stem there with all the roots. Um, and you'll also notice in some of my tanks, mainly the Ufaga tanks, these, uh, it's clay. Um, it's calcium bearing clay that um, the frogs really tend to soak. They, you know, they, they go and set their, their pelvic patch on it and it absorbs, it's said to absorb some nutrients and I can attest that the frogs definitely use it. You can see I have one there in my Anchikaya tank as well um, to the left of that tank this tank should also look significant significantly different this used to have my inch the Bahia Solano and I recently replanted it and added a couple pieces of wood spruced it up a bit um, and this houses my Ufaga histrionica large form redhead which are some new frogs um, Plant wise, there's some philodendron lamani. Um, these green bromeliads here, these are Neo Regilia Malibu. Um, there's a couple fireballs in here, and uh, some Varicosum, some Microgramma up in the top right corner up here. Other than that, it's just moss and leaf litter. Uh, there is some Lanacardi Road. I don't know if you can see it there in the back, that dark green plant. Um, it's a really cool plant. I just took a cutting of it and I put it in the tank and I don't remember which tank, but um, anyhow, that's that tank. Um, so the, these two of both are kind of fresh, well, about two months set up. They haven't really had a chance to fully grow in, but um, they were already pre set up. So, you know, they do have some growth in the background, which looks kind of cool. So uh, to the left of that, this is, by the way, these tanks here, these smaller ones, um, for you guys that haven't seen my tours before, these are also built by me. These are 22 by 17 by 24. Um, two of them fit really good on a, on a standard Baker rack. The 44 one tank fits. Uh, now these tanks were built by Protein here. You can see they kind of have that curved round uh, front piece here. Just let me this piece here, it's kind of curved and around. I actually don't like that. Uh, I used to think it was cool, but I think it kind of obstructs your view and it causes distraction where the flat, the flat line that I build kind of disappears. So I like that better. Um, anyways, this tank has a lot of Neo Regilia Malibu. Um, as you can see, it's just a really simple green bromelia, but it pups like crazy. Um, and it's really, really good for large obligates. So. Um, there's some begonia van Kerkoveni in the bottom left and this plant in the middle here everyone asks what the little palm tree is that is biophytum sensitivum uh, I didn't even plant this one it just grew out of the moss that I got so um, yeah and uh, yeah really simple tanks a few plants in there but uh, I think it's a really successful tank and just goes to show that a good you know well done hardscape really all you need uh, you don't need a whole bunch of plants to make a tank look nice so um, this houses my Ufaga Sylvatica San Lorenzo and um, yeah they are like breeding sorry about that they're like uh, little rabbits for me so uh, to the left of that this is my another 22 by 17 by 24 this is my Ufaga Histrionica bullseye tank um, some random Neo Regilia. I thought it was Malibu. I don't know if Malibus get that red center like that, but um, whatever. They use it for breeding, so I keep it in there. There's some Philodendron Lincoln Park, and that spotted bromeliad there is Neo Regilia Big O, and then this big one here in the front, that is Vregia fenestralis, which is a, a favorite, one of the favorite plants for my large obligates. They really tend to use them for rearing tadpoles obviously one of the downfalls is how large it gets so you do sometimes have to trim these front leaves when they hit the glass just so you're not constantly smearing 
condensation all over the place. But um, yeah, Histrionica bullseye, uh, really a classic dart frog. I think that any serious poison dart frog keeper should have. And to the left of that, this is my Ufaga Pamilio Cemetery Bastimentos tank. Um, a couple plants, I'm not exactly sure what are in here. There's some little peperomia here. I don't exactly know the species on it, but I really, really like it. It doesn't get too crazy. Um, I tend to like the small vining peperomias over the ones that grow like a bush, kind of. Um, this, I believe, is a microgramma of some sort, some sort of aphidic fern. Um, here we've got uh, Neoregilia Big O. That is Neoregilia Zoe. And this just shows you the difference of Neoregilia Zoe not in super bright light, and then Neoregilia Zoe in super bright light. Um, same thing goes for Big O. That's Big O there, and that's Big O there. So the higher they are to the light, the more red coloration and the more brightness I guess bright color they will have so um lots of moss leaf litter simple pamilio tanks my pamilio tanks really i keep the ground floor pretty simple because those little buggers are hard to catch when you're trying to collect them for shipping um to the left of that this is my ufaga pamilio escudo tank um we've got a little monolina there that's actually grown okay um it's bloomed and spit a bunch of little seedlings and you know i've used it in other tanks like here you can see down in that corner down there that's actually a, the seedling from that plant um some random near regilias in here i mean these are very small frogs so they're not too particular on um bromeliads for rearing they've used all of them some of these are uh fireballs some of them are the near regilia zoe I'm not a real big fan of the Zoe, but um, a local greenhouse had two potted bromeliads that were near Virginia Zoe, and they each had like 25 pups on them, and it was like 30 bucks. So I bought them. Um, there's some Mark Gravia Umbellata in there, um, some Mark Gravia Surnam, some moss, leaf litter. Uh, nothing too spectacular in that tank, but. Again, my Pamilio tanks, I try and keep them pretty simple. And here, this is another 22 by 17 by 24. This houses my Ufaga Pamilio Rio Calubre. And again, some random near Regilias. Uh, there's some Cebu Blue you can see kind of trailing around everywhere. Some Mark Gravia, Umbalata, um, Rectiflora, which I don't really recommend Rectiflora anymore. That thing grows like crazy and just, it can become quite a nuisance. Um, I end up throwing a ton of it out, so. And no, I'm not gonna go through cuttings and send you guys free bags of it because I just don't like selling plants really. Unless you buy frogs, if you buy frogs, I'll collect some, I'll send some plants with you, but um, I don't like shipping plants, as weird as that sounds. I don't mind shipping frogs, but plants, no thanks. Um, this tank's grown pretty well. I like it. It's nothing spectacular, but uh, it's kind of cool. It's got some cool pieces of wood and, you know, overall interesting tank. And here, this is the Ufaga Pamilio um, Tropical Garage Bastimentos, is what some people are calling them. Uh, it's an unknown locale Bastimentos. They just came in as Bastimentos without site-specific locality info. So um, I was calling them Unknown Basti for years, but it's kind of an uh, uncatchy, dumb, uninteresting name. So I've kind of switched it to Tropical Garage Line, even though they're, it's like a strictly strictly import. But um, again, my, all my Pamilio tanks are very similar. A little bit of moss on the ground, um, some wood with moss, Marcravia some random neo -Regilias. um you could use Vresia too but i don't know i just use the the neo because they're they pop like crazy and they're easy and the pamilio are smaller frogs so they tend to not get scratched or cut as easily by the spiky brahms like the large obligates would because they're heavier so um to the right of that this is my ufaga pamilio salarte tank 
Um, this tank, for some reason, I don't know if it's the way my fan blows in here, but it gets super dry. Like this back piece of wood used to be covered in this really cool liverwort, but the tank dried out um, over like literally one night and it all died. So I think it may start coming back, hopefully. But um, again, Permelio tank, simple. Some wood, some moss, some Arcravia, some vines, and Miragilia. This tank over here right now um, has a Ufaga Sylvatica Diablo or Portaquito is what the old people used to call them or what I used to call them. But since they got imported legally, they have the title of Diablo. So uh, I'm not sure on the sex on it, but uh, it's very shy. I don't see it too often. So hopefully I'll be able to get some shots of it for you guys. Um, there's a couple different plants in this one. I do have the Philodendron Griselia, I believe it's called, or Grazialia, something like that. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it's in that back left corner. Um, I don't really, I didn't like it at first, but when it started growing up, which I just recently took two cuttings for friends of mine, um, I did like the way it started growing and, and climbing the wall. It was pretty nice. Um, there's some Peperomia serpents in here. That thing grows like crazy for me, and I use that in a bunch of tanks. Um, there may be some Cebu Blue, a couple very small biophytums, um, Umbilatum, Centenisi, Suriname, all that fun stuff. Okay. And now getting on to one of the more fun tanks. Uh, this is another 44 by 17 by 24. This one houses my Dendrobates leucomelis fine spot. Um, I've got six in here, my original adults, and then I did hold back for offspring. And uh, so far, everyone's getting along. Leucomelis are known to do well in groups, um, but I have had or heard some mixed results with the fine spot uh, variation. But uh, yeah, this tank has some Neoregia Malibu. It's got a couple biophytums, again, that I did not plant. Um, some orchids, we've got uh, some Lepanthes calodictian crossed with Tentaculata. Uh, these ferns that are in here, um, I did not plant them. They just showed up. So um, I kind of like the look of them, but I will have to stay on top because they will get out of control. Um, there's a couple Raphidophoras in here. Uh, there's I really like this orchid here. I forget what it's called. Um, yeah, a lot of the orchids did okay in here. I actually didn't lose too many. I lost a couple, but um, yeah, everything else still stayed alive. And uh, I've got some weird, unknown little ruffly philodendron. Got some varicosum. Um, and some Margravia umbellata and I believe there's also a bunch of that uh, serpents is in here that peperomia serpents and what else also some peperomia villicollis but moss did really well in this tank and overall I'm pretty happy with it so to the left of that is one that I built on the channel this is the in situ alto. Um, this one has some plants you guys have not seen on the channel before. That big one there is uh, Philodendron montanum. Um, there is some Anthurium waterberryanum in there. And we've got some Peperomia serpens, some Neoregia malibu. We've got some uh, Plurothallus grobii orchids. There's multiple different versions in there. I've got some Philodendron mame down at the bottom in the middle there. Um, hasn't really got the best growth yet, but it's all the way down at the bottom, so it'll take a while, which is fine by me. You guys know I like to plant my tanks sparsely to start and then let them grow in with time. So. Um, that tank is looking really good though. I, I really like the way it looks so far. 
Uh, this, oh, sorry. Let me go back here. This tank um, actually houses seven Ranitamea Highland Sorensis. I know, I said I'd never keep Ranitamea again, but I've had them since December and I do have them breeding and I've got four froglets right now, so um, they're doing well. And I do see them more than I thought I would, so. Um, I mean, I have seven in there, so I usually see about two or three of them uh, when I actually go and look in the tank, but uh, to the left of that tank, this is the other in-situ that I built on the channel. This is the Amazonia, not Amazonica. Um, this tank has some Dendrobates azureus in it, uh, some Philodendron Lincoln Park, some Margravia, some Umbellata, some Alafa Glossum, Elephoglossum peltatum, some other varicosums, and we've got some microgrammas and all kinds of fun stuff in there. Uh, the Azurius I have are the fine spot. Um, they are breeding and doing quite well. I guess I'll show you another new addition to the room is the couch. Um, we've got a new couch here. Well, it's an old hand-me-down. Um, from my girlfriend Jamie's brother Johnny and Allie. They got a new couch so they didn't want their old one. So yeah, it fits in the frog room pretty well. And I have the two tanks over there right behind it, which is pretty cool. When I sit over there, I can take a gander at uh, what's going on in the tanks. So uh, we're gonna move on to the bottom row now. Okay. And right underneath the Lucamellus tank, I have another 44 by 17 by 24. Uh, another custom made, made by myself. This houses nine Philobates Mint Terribilis, which are just a bunch of animals. <laughs> um, they're unbelievable how much food they can eat and how much they breed. I think I have three females in here and I am gathering about 80 eggs a week right now. Um, it's getting out of control, but really just such cool frogs. They're unbelievably bold. I mean, you can see a few of them out right now. It is almost 3 a.m. and they're still out. No, my lights are not normally on till 3 a.m., but for you guys, I have to clean all these tanks and then film out here. So yeah, this is just a little special occasion. I think I filmed the last one really late at night as well. Um, we've got uh, a, a really miserable looking El Choco Red. Uh, this leaf here was sitting in front of, you can see how big it is, it's huge. Um, but it was sitting in front of this mist head and just this whole side of the tank was not getting enough uh, enough misting so um, these two leaves look like crap but we got a new leaf coming out so hopefully that one looks better obviously the plant has outgrown the tank so I will be transplanting that new growth and node to the 300 gallon paludarium uh, we've got some restrepia orchids and uh, that is uh, Monstera siltepicana right there on the bottom left. Um, we've got a gorgeous Anthurium crystallinum. Um, this is doing really, really good. That's a huge leaf too. You can kind of see the size of my hand. Um, it's probably about the size of my head to be honest. And there's quite a few leaves on that plant. Um, so far, I'm going to leave it in here for a little while longer. I mean, it's getting close to being outgrowing it, but uh, for the time being, I'm going to keep it in. Uh, we've got quite a bit of the Peperomia amarginella. And I also have some Makotis patola. Uh, it's a jewel orchid. It's really cool. Um, doing super well in here. We've got some Microgrammas. Some more of that uh, Peperomia villicollis. That's what you see here. It's all, you know, wandering about. Uh, oh, we've got some little orchids blooming there. I'll get you guys some better footage of that. Um, most of the orchids in this tank did survive and do well. 
Um, we've got some other little peperomias and aeroids and orchids, all that fun stuff. Really love this orchid, uh, Zootrophy and Griffin. I really, really like it. Uh, there's some more of the mints just kind of hanging out up there. Let me see if I can show you guys one of their clutches. Oh. I hit the button on the gimbal. Yeah, here's uh, I don't know how many eggs are there, but that's just one clutch for the week. I'll probably get two or three more. So yeah, it's it's getting out of control. Okay. Anyways, I love that tank. Um, it's got a cool little water feature in it. It's kind of discreet. Um, so I'll show you. You guys saw it in the last one, but we've got some drippage there and some drippage going on in the back over here. Um, successful water feature that I like. Normally, um, water features can be a pain in the butt. Uh, this tank here, we're back to the 22 by 17 by 24 size. This tank houses my Dendrobates Tinctorius Vanessa. Um, Vanessa are really, really cool, and they're sort of hot right now. It seems like a lot of people want them, and not a lot of people are having a ton of success with them. But um, they look similar to a powder blue, obviously, as you can see. But um, they are really just black and white, or black and gr black and gray and white, uh, where the powder blue has that cream color and the powder blue coloration to the legs. So um, some of my froglets come out and they look like powder blues and then as they age they lose all that color and they turn black and white. So uh, this tank recently got a ton of this uh, Begonia Maldonado or also I, it was sold to or it was given to me as Lita but I've heard it's actually Maldonado or something along those lines. Whatever it is, it grows out of control, and I had to pull a ton of it out of the background here. That's why the tank looks kind of, I don't know, bare. And I really don't need the bromeliads, but they actually, when the, when the um, petri dishes are taken up, they will lay tons of eggs on the bromeliads, so I just leave them in there. Like I said, I let the tanks do their thing. Moving to the right, another 22 by 17 by 24. This is my... Dendrobates Tinctorious Yellowback Tank. Um, I've got my two adults in here, and then I also have uh, a young male that I just kind of held back and never sold. Um, not for any particular reason. It's not like it's a special looking animal or anything. It's just a, I don't know. I kept like three or four of them because I don't. they normally don't sell too well. Um, and I was just curious to see how they would grow. And they're doing very well. And this tank as well got a ton of the Begonia Maldonado ripped out. I mean, I literally filled a five gallon bucket full of it and I threw it out. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, there's a couple of bromeliads, some Mark Ravius and Tennessee that's seen better days. Obviously it doesn't look great right now. Like I said, that Begonia pretty much choked a lot of every plant that I had in here out. Um, so yeah, moss looks good. You know, simple Tinctorious tank. And by the way, guys, these all these tanks in here are technically my my breeder tanks. You know, I don't set them up to be displays, but I do kind of go for an enjoyable looking breeder. So it's like kind of a I don't know a uh, hybrid tank, if you will. Um, this is a new another one I set up recently. This used to be the drip wall tank, but um, I just uh, the drip wall just it took up way too much space and it wasn't usable space so um, I just can't you can't even really see the wood the hardscape that I did in this tank but um, it just kind of has had some cuttings and some random philodendrons I think there's a melanocrysum in there there's some other pilea peperomia some marcravia some orchids just some random I just kind of threw it together one day um, there are two Josh's Frogs yellowback line that I planned on mixing with my line of yellowback. So um, they're growing out in there. And then also I have a uh, citronella I'm growing out in there as well. Um, that's whatever. It's not a great looking tank right now, but I think it will look good in a few months, hopefully. 
This tank here, this is a, another 22 by 17 by 24. This one houses my Dendrobates Tinctorius Katari. Um, that are one of my favorite Tinctorius. They're very unique color and very unique pattern when it comes to Tinctorius. And supposedly they're very rare, um, which is cool. So uh, I've got some Peperomia turboensis on the left here. It seems like people really like that plant. Um, I've had that for quite a while uh, with uh, Katari. I could probably transplant it to some other tanks. Um, got the Villacollis in there, another um, Biophytum, some Ficus oak leaf. I guess you'll see a, that's pretty much the only Ficus left in here. Um, the tank doesn't look great right now up top because I did dry the tank out recently um, just to give them a break from breeding. So I kind of dried it out a little bit to stop, give them just a, a few weeks to replenish. Um, there was no real reason to it. I was still getting viable clutches and viable eggs, but I just, I wanted to give them a break. They've been going at it for, for a year or so straight. So, um, lots of moss. You guys see all the moss there. Everyone, everyone always is always very interested in my moss. Uh, okay. The next tank is going to look significantly different from the last tour. This is the green sip Halloweeny tank that had just loads of ficus uh quercifolia in it and i told you guys before i hate ficus um it just took it took i mean it, it took over everything so i ripped it all out um and i threw it in the trash <laughs> and uh i used peperomia serpens in a similar manner um i hope it takes over like like the ficus did but just stays way more manageable. Um, this is way easier to clip and trim and keep looking good rather than the ficus that you know just grows out towards you and basically becomes a big bush, and you know you lose a lot of the usable space in the vivarium. So um, yeah, this is a very simple green cipollini tank. Um, it's really just got moss and peperomia serpents and a couple cuttings of Marcravia. Um, I do see some ficus in here too, and I'm just now noticing down here at the bottom um, some ficus growing right there. I thought I ripped all of it out. Oh, I see a little bit on the background too. That plant just it just won't give up. Um, but anyways, um, very simple Tinctorius tank. And in this tank here, this is a newer setup um, re or redo, I guess I should say. Um, I kind of wanted to go for like a, you know, tree root type of thing. Um, Brazilian habitat. I don't know if that makes any sense. But um, yeah, this tank isn't fully planted yet. There's a couple of little cuttings of moss or patches of moss and some serpents and some selaginella. And uh, that's really it. I haven't really planted anything in there yet. Um, so um, that will be being planted here coming up soon. And to the right of that, this is my Ufaga Lamani yellow tank, um, my breeding pair. Um, you guys have seen many times before. This tank just looks like a bunch of giant bromeliads, and that's pretty much what it is. But, um, you know, I, with these frogs, I really just want to try and produce as many as I can. And I got four to finally come out. The four was the most I've ever had come out of the water. I had four come out of the water in July last summer, which was very exciting for me. I was very happy. These are my favorite frogs. And I lost all four froglets in September. So two months in, I lost all of them. So um, that was very depressing for me. It was a low point, probably a low point in the hobby for me. I just felt like, like man, well, am I doing something wrong? But... Um, you know, one of the things about the large obligate breeders, I think we do try to, you know, go back to the drawing board and really figure some stuff out, try some new things. And, you know, it's it's a learning experience. And hopefully this round is going to be better. They haven't reared any froglets for me since then, but they are caring for four tadpoles right now, I can find. So um, I switched a few things up in their tank 
to get more viable clutches of eggs, I started using these bigger film cans um, that I started selling actually too, if anyone's interested, hit me up. Um, they're larger than film cans, but they're smaller than the, the big PVC things. So, um, and they're lighter weight. So they're kind of a perfect little, uh, little egg de deposition site. So, um, anyways, we'll get into the tank here. We've got, um, this is Varigia, uh, Varigia fenestralis, and then we've got some more Neo Regia Malibus. Yeah, I guess Malibus do get that color in the center. You can see it in this one too. Um, got some clay in the bottom, and we've got some moss and some wood, some peperomias, and some Margravias, and that's really it. Um, I kept it simple, but um, as you can see, my Lawani have gotten much, much bolder. Um, you know, there's a female sitting out and just chilling. Well, normally it's probably nighttime right now. Well, I know it's nighttime right now, but, um, and they just kind of roost up in the, in the bromeliads. So, um, she's hanging out. And to the right of that, we've got some new frogs. This is the old Lucamellus tank. I end ended up not redoing it. I just kind of spruced it up and added piece of wood and kind of redesigned it replanted it um it looks pretty cool actually and um these are this houses the dendrobates tinctorius oyapak uh, which i've never owned before i've seen them before and i do happen to think that my trio is one of the better examples of uh dendrobates tinctorius oyapak in the american hobby uh, most of them i see are mostly black uh, with some, not to say that that's bad, <laughs> but uh, I prefer the ones that are, um, have more white and blue rather than black. So um, I just think the, the white pops, you know, it shows really well. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a trio of those, uh, 2.1. 2.1, for those don't, who don't know, two is the males and one is the females. The first number that you say is always the males and the second number is the females. And then if there's a third number, that's usually unsexed froglets or unsexed, you know, um, sub adults. But anyways, um, the tank has got some Begonia Prismatocarpa and it's got some Philodendron Lincoln Park and it's got some Margravius and Tennessee, some moss and is that it? I think that's really it in this tank. Um, I kept it pretty simple. I do have a lizard in this tank. There's a, it's a gonatodi species that my buddy Jake just gave to me. He said, yeah, throw it in with the tinctorius. It'll be fine. So um, I see it every once in a while scampering across the top of the tank. Um, it's usually late at night, which one of those nights was tonight. Um, there's weeks that I don't see it. So um, yeah, really cool frogs, and I'm kind of digging the tank too. So, uh, like I said, breeder tanks, I'm not super picky about. Um, this tank here is more of that Peperomia serpens. Um, this just houses some Dendrobates tinctoria citronella um, that I'm growing out. I've got uh, four in there, and then I have two giant orange that I'm growing out in there, and then I have one spotless Katari that I held back um, that I'm growing out in this tank. So. Um, yeah, Lincoln Park, there's some Grizzelia, there's some Pilea, um, there is some Peperomia Serpens, obviously a ton of that. Um, but yeah, I just set this one up originally for froglets. Oh, there's some Margravia too, I guess I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I set this one up for froglets, and see, this is that Grizzelia I was talking about, how I used to not like it would, it didn't want to grow right, but then once it got happy, it started climbing up there, and I really like the. It almost like it doesn't shingle, but it's like it it it, it shingles off of the background. The way it, I don't know, it just looks really cool. I really like the way that grows there. Um, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but in person, it's it's a really cool plant. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this one grows in. It's I'm just gonna keep letting it do its thing, and then eventually. Um, I'll probably spruce it up a little bit with some nicer plants or a few, you know, just like, kind of get away from it. It's, it's very static right now, the way it looks. Um, so I may put some, some nicer plants in there 
when I actually have a pair. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the citronella or the giant orange in there yet. So, um, yeah, that's that tank. And uh, this tank here, this houses my Dendrobates Tinctorius Brazilian Yellowhead. You can see the glass on this tank for some reason got severely stained. Um, I got to order some new doors, which I'm constantly at my glass shop. I can't believe I still haven't got, because the doors have been like this for over a year. So um, I just can't believe I haven't got new doors for it yet. But yeah, it's, it's stained. So uh, I don't know why the misting system, I mean, none of the other tanks are really like this. There's a couple that have like minor staining, but this one got it really bad. So I don't know. I don't know why, but it is what it is um anyways brazilian yellowheads really cool frogs um i've got some philodendron peach tunneler in here um i've got some mark Ravius and no i don't have some tennis in here i have uh i think it's just wrecked the floor in here um some begonia van kirkhoveni over here up at the top that's van, van kirkhoveni there that's my favorite begonia it's slow and it stays really small and doesn't want to take over um, this tank also this had the most of that uh, begonia maldonado or lita or whatever you want to call it this tank it was like the green sip tank was but it was with that begonia i it's it just i couldn't the only thing i could see in the tank was literally this little front patch like right here in the front and then this piece of wood that was it every other thing in the background was completely covered by that begonia so um, yeah, I re I just literally just ripped it out. I think about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks. Um, so this tank, the background looks kind of bare, but, um, I mean, I like the way that begonia looked, but it literally was just choking everything out and you couldn't see anything. So I'm not into those kind of tanks. I want some movement. I want your eye to move around and, you know, I don't know, maybe it's cause I'm a dorky artist, but Anywho, um, there's also some Raphidophora in there. I forget the name of it, the actual species name. But, uh, yeah, another simple Tinctorious tank. Um, and then the last tank is the Ufaga Histrionica Blue, or Ufaga Blue Histrionica. <laughs> I don't really know what to say on that. It's Ufaga Histrionica Blue, I guess. Um, but everyone calls them blue histos. So um, this is their tank. They are breeding. Um, they've been pretty prolific for me. The first ones came out in December and I've had seven come out so far. Um, one of them I had come out uh, was a tripod. It only had one rear leg. It's still alive and I'm gonna give it a chance. You know, someone said I should euthanize it. I'm like, nah, man, I'll give it a chance. Um, so I still have the frog. He's probably about a month old and he's, he seems to be kicking and he's, you know, the way he uses his one back leg, he kind of centers it in his body and so he can balance himself. It's actually kind of cool to watch, but, um, yeah, really, really beautiful frogs. Um, any large obligates, usually the behaviors are really cool with them. So, um, and they happen to just look absolutely gorgeous as well. So, um, this tank, I ended up having to remove, I had used to have four of these bromeliads, but I actually like the look of it better with three. Um, there was one right up here, it just outgrew it. it. It was pushing on the top glass and just looking really bad. So um, I had to pull that one, but these are all uh, Vregia fenestralis and uh, they're doing really well. So, um, and the Blue Histo love them for raising tadpoles. Um, obviously that's the only choice they have, but um, they've, like I said, been pretty prolific. And um, yeah, that's usually a good sign when they're you know raising three to four at a time. So, um, what else do we have? I've got uh, an Anthurium Crystallinum here. Um, I've just had this one leaf since August. I've got, it looks like the node is starting to throw some new growth finally, but um, you know it's not in the greatest shape. You can see it's got a little yellowing going on, but it's been alive. The, I mean, the leaf has grown a bit. It was really little at first, but it's from Equigenera. Um, I've got a bunch of that, the uh, Peperomia serpents climbing all along the back. I may need to go through and kind of trim that. 
Uh, like I said, it's easier to manage than that, like Ficus pamilla or Marcravius and Marcravia rectiflora. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Centenisi. I apologize for that. Um, oh, looks like it's a, no, it's a dead leaf. I thought I thought maybe the uh, Zootrophian Griffin was gonna do a little bloom, but it's just a dead leaf because they have these weird little spike blooms they throw. I forget the actual name of the type of bloom, but yeah. Um, got some Restrepia orchids still alive in there, hanging on back in the back. Um, this is, I talked about it before, this is that unnamed or unknown philodendron, but I think it's been re-described as something else, but I can't remember the actual name. Um, I believe that's a Stellis orchid there in the back. Um, most of the other Restrepia ones went to crap, they didn't do well. Got some of that Cebu blue creeping along. I constantly have to trim that because it's out of control. Um, then I have the, uh, that is the Microgramma Lycopodiodes or something? Lycopodioids? I don't know exactly how to say it, as you can tell. Uh, oh, there's a blue histo just kind of hanging out in front. Um, and then this is the Monolina. I forget the name of the Monolina. I got it from Rizzo, but... Um, yeah, that's the one that grew from the seedling. And I don't think there's any other plants in here that I'm forgetting about. Um, simple tank again. Oh, there's some little philodendron here. Uh, I forget. I don't even know what it is. If it's Scandens or if it's more of that peach tunnel. Or, I'm not exactly sure. But, um, yeah, simple tank. But, you know, I, I really dig this one. Um, it's really cool watching the Blue Histo... You know, because there's like those long planks and I like watching them. They walk along the planks and the male calls and um, it's very cool to watch. So, um, yeah, that is all of the tanks. Um, so I'll go back around. We'll give you a little 180 or 360. I don't even know what, how many degrees it is, but this is the bottom row. And we've got the in situs. And then you move up to the top. And we'll give you a little panning action. So that's all the tanks. Um, and I've got, these are my froglets. All over here in these cool little tubs I use. Um, I get these tubs from Target. I probably shouldn't have told you guys that because now I'll never be able to get them again. But um, they're really great. Frogs don't seem to ever escape. I have very little flies escape. And as far as opening them, you just like kind of lift up on this tab and it opens up and then it clicks shut. Um, so much easier than the 190 ounce containers for raising froglets, but um, yeah, that's uh, the actual frog room portion, I guess you could say, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got my desk, my really messy desk, froglets, and then all the tanks. Okay, and these two racks here, I'm actually standing outside because I'm so close to the garage door right now. So um, these are my tadpole tanks, and uh, I've just got basically everything individual you know before I used to throw everything in one tub now I've got you know um, species tubs so basically Azurius, Oyapak, Citron or not uh, Green Sips, Mint, Terribilis, Vanessa, Yellowback, uh, Katari, Fine Spot Lukes and then in the bottom right there I do have uh, some Valeri glass frogs and their tub actually has a canister filter on it um, everything else is all run off air pumps and sponge filters and yeah um, got the ADA Amazonia as a substrate and some of them some of them I have no substrate and just do almond leaves and I feed the soylent green like before and I have some floating plants but um, so basically similar setup um, just on a bigger scale um, I can have more tadpoles now 
because I have many different tubs. And then up on top, the top shelf, or not the very top shelf, but um, you can see some individual cups where I have Renatomea Highland Sorensis tadpoles. And I also have my eggs up there. Springtails on the very top, and then also all my petri dishes and all that fun stuff. So nothing too exciting with the tadpoles. Um, see if any you can see any of them oh yeah there's a little green sit back in that corner um but yeah the water stays very clear in the tanks that have the um ada amazonia or amazonica i don't know what it's what it is whatever but um yeah, i've got a bunch of mint terabillus tadpoles in here i mean quite a few they're laying so many eggs so um yeah that's really it, so. Okay, this is a little update on the 300 gallon. As you can see here, the track that Trey Bell designed uh, did not work out. Um, it was quite a hang up because I tried four millimeter doors and three millimeter doors and they would not slide in this track, the metal track. It's just too tight. There was no play and the doors wouldn't slide, so. That was a no-go. I got them to the size that I had cut fit. I could get them in, but they could not slide anywhere. Um, neither the three millimeter or the four millimeter door. These doors are rather large, so I didn't want to go, you know, two millimeter or anything thinner than that. So I decided to scrap this track and I couldn't get this top piece off of this glass. So I had to remove this whole top front piece. Um, and since this was a big stabilizer for the glass, cause it's only quarter inch glass, I had to figure something out for the top as well. Um, so let me show you what I did. What I did on the top, you can see there's a piece of glass, another piece of glass right here um, that runs along the whole piece. It really helps eliminate a lot of the bowing that was happening. Um, it's just a 59 and a half by one inch piece of glass that I had cut and I just put it right behind the track right there. So it acts as a stabilizer for that top piece. So um, that was no big issue. And then on the bottom, I decided to build a Sherman style vent. Um, and the Sherman style vent is a really simple idea, um, really effective for getting some airflow. And it does look pretty good, I must say. Um, for my first try, uh, I'm sure I could, with the more I do, I would be a lot more clean with the silicone. I figured a couple things out that would make it neater. But um, basically what you do to make a Sherman vent, uh, first off, if you haven't checked out TCS Dart Frog's channel, um, his video, he talks about, you know, making a, a you know, Euro style vivarium with a Sherman style vent. Um, but basically what I did, it's two pieces of quarter inch glass that are 59 and a half inches wide by one inch deep. Um, and basically you just get these spacers and these spacers are actually from Chris Sherman, the guy who developed the Sherman vent. And you just put them, you know, he said uh, it's, it's good not to go above, I think he said 22 inches or 21 inches or maybe it was 18, I can't remember. So, um, you know, I have uh, five different spacers here. Uh, really non-discreet and do doesn't obstruct your view too much. Um, and you just basically silicone it all together. And, you know, your this front spot is open, but there is a vent, you know, on the back side, back here, there's a vent. So, um, and I'm sure you guys noticed there are quite a few plants in here. My buddy Hiroki Cruz or Studio 50 Frogs on Instagram or Studio 50 Vivariums on Instagram. Uh, he sent me a nice plant package last week. So a lot of these plants, um, I'm not sure if these are the final um, positions they're going to be in for the final planting. I just put them in to keep them alive because um, I do not have the doors currently at the moment um, I've been wrapping the front in saran wrap to keep the humidity in just to keep these plants alive 
Um, the doors don't fit because they were measured for Trey's track and the Sherman vent I made a little taller than Trey's track so I had to get a half inch shaved off the doors. They're currently at my glass shop and I'm waiting for them to be finished so I can install the doors and then I can really begin the you know tweaks and all the fine tuning on this tank but um, yeah we've got some really nice aeroids. This Philodendron Montanum is just a very very nice plant. Um, I love this plant. We've got some Hieroglyphica, Vresia, uh, Vresia Erythrodactylon, Vresia Racinae. That's the Bromeliad scheme I kind of went with. I'm not sure if the, that's the final layout for them either. Um, we got some Anthurium Corrigatum down here. Or is it Philodendron Corrigatum? I don't know. I actually don't know. That's terrible. And we got some Philodendron Lin Hanonii. That's that super textured leaf there. Um, I got this triangular shape plant. I forget what it is from my buddy Damien at Renarium. Damien also sent me this Veracossum. I, I forget which one it is. That's from Hiroki. That is a Veracossum Cobra. Um, I think I've got some Pastazanum over here. Some Florida Ghost. Uh, Burl Marks. Burl Marks Fantasy is over here. Um, a ton of plants in here. Really, really nice plants. Oh, and can't forget the Anthurium Moraquianum. Um, just in all its glory. Doesn't seem to be loving where it's at right now. That leaf's kind of, well, I guess that leaf is always kind of bad. The big one looks okay. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I do have some Monstera dubia right there. Some liverworts on the moss as, or as on the wood. And then I've got some regular moss on the ground. So uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth on that. Um, this is the water area. Um, I guess I could lighten that up a little for you. That's the water area. And the sump down below seems to be doing its job. Um, since there are going to be some streamish type animals in here that enjoy streams and paludariums, um, I did decide to put a little power head on the tank, um, and that is the Vortec MP10 um, cordless on the inside, which is really nice, and that's definitely what I wanted. So, um, yeah, it's creating a nice little flow amongst the whole tank. And yeah, I'll give you guys a much more in-depth video for this tank um, once those doors come in and I can really fine tune it. But for now, I just wanted to give you guys an update since it has been a couple months since I've even touched anything on this tank for the videos. So um, yeah, that's it. And um, that's going to do it for the full tour. So um, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Goldberg, out.